Shalom family, let's have a look at 2 Peter 3, verse 3 to 9. And I'll touch on a few things as we move through the scripture. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. Right? So we're seeing a lot of scoffers. That in itself is a sign of the last days. The one is connected to the other. So it is a good thing as much as we don't enjoy it. They are walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Judgment took place. Judgment is going to take place again. They willfully forget this. The same way the people in the times of Noah did not believe, so also now in the times of the end they do not believe. The same way he had scoffers, we have scoffers. Time and time again, it is the same. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing. And here's your clue. That with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Right, before I carry on, He's giving you a key here. Work out the days... Of creation as days of the Lord. There were seven days. There will be 7,000 years for man. Everything works out exactly like that. And when you start breaking it down. And you see Jesus giving you examples the whole time about two days. Old and New Testament. In his return. That will bring him to 6,000 years for the time of creation. And a 1,000 years of rest. He's giving you a clue as to look at the timeline. And go and study it and see what's going on. And then calculate a day for a thousand years. And then you'll understand the ballpark of where you're at in Ha'akaron, the final generation. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness. But is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. All. All have a chance to turn to Jesus Christ. All have that option to accept what Jesus did for them on the cross and receiving into their lives. And the longer we wait, though it seem like he tarries, he is busy in the field. We're watching testimonies come out of Gaza, come out of Israel, where people are giving their lives to Jesus Christ, experiencing miracles, seeing the Lord work. The King is in the field. He is working. He is saving lives. He is giving dreams and visions and revelations. He is moving in power. Where are we? Are we just sitting and just chilling? No, we should be in the field with the King, working the harvest. Gathering as many as we can gather that are ripe for harvest, that they all may partake of that promise of which he is not slack. He has promised that he has gone to prepare a place for us. And when he is done, he will come back and receive us to himself, that where he is, there we may be also. And that time is any time now. We are at the very point of the end of the timeline of man, calculated a day for a thousand years. It's an exciting time to be alive and as dark as it gets and it's going to get darker and as crazy as it gets and it's going to get crazier, we will stand because our foundations are built on the rock of ages. Jesus Christ is our rock. We shall not be moved. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We know how to stand against principalities and powers and spiritual hosts in the heavenlies and Powers of wickedness come. The Holy Spirit is with us. We are ready for battle. And we will shine a raging fire of the Holy Spirit to shine in this darkness until he comes to collect those who are ready with the oil 
in their lamps. So stand strong, pray, preach, minister, reach out, do all you can do where God has placed you. Because he is with us. Shalom.